Hey there, it's Board Game Dave, and welcome to this very special unboxing of Brussels 1893 Belle Epoque, designed by Etienne Esperman and illustrated by Ammo Dasterak, who is, by the way, an illustrator from Brussels. Uh, this is a game published by Geek Attitude Games. Of course, it's a reprint of the original Brussels 1893, published 10 years ago in 2013. This is something I've been very excited about for uh, four months, according to VGG, I uh, added it to my want to play based on a recommendation by the game table. My friend Daniel over there was raving about this game that I think he was able to get at, um, oh, what convention was he at? Essen, I believe, is where they had first premiered this game. So I was dying to get a copy, couldn't get a copy for the longest time, saw it at PAX, and then somehow saw that Miniature Market had it in stock. So I jumped on it. And here it is, Brussels 1893. I have read through the rule book. I have watched so many videos. I was listening to the uh, heavy cardboard guys talk about it on their podcast. This is a game I am absolutely so obsessed with and I'm thrilled to be finally opening this up. So, Bell Epoch, yes. Thematically, we play as one of these illustrious architects of Brussels 1893, the beginning of the Art Nouveau style. We're gonna construct magnificent houses and create artworks to decorate them with, uh, and we're gonna uh, recruit some nobles to help us out, and the person with the most prestige at the end of the game wins. So here's our rule book components there. Lovely illustration, of course. They totally did an overhaul on the art. Although, honestly, I'm, I'm surprised because there's this art style here which looks very modern, board gaming, and even some of the boards, but then, um, for example, very quickly, these, no, not those, the house tiles look very similar to the original. Like some of that art there looks very, very, very true to the original. Uh, actually, it might be identical, I'm not positive. So anyways, we've got a rule book here. It's a fairly uh, heavy complex game, so kind of a longer rule book. But of course we do have the expansion, Belly Pock expansion. I'm not sure how much that adds exactly, but there is that as well. No solo mode as far as I know, although I think there's some fan-made uh, variants. This is a game for one, two, is it four or five? Oh, sorry. Of course, two to five players, 45 minutes to 120 minutes, and ages 14 and up. So let's take a look very quickly. Here we've got each different architects gets their own home board right there that you'll be building off of. Very lovely. I like that a lot. I'm not sure if that's how it was in the original. I don't think it was. I like that. Five points for building your topmost uh, buildings there, costs on the left, and there's your house icons that'll go on your board. Very lovely. Oh, and there's the fifth player board. Okay. Lots of coin tokens. I will not be using these. Of course, I'll be using my metal coins. I've got plenty that'll go well with this game. Very nice. We have our artworks, which look like uh, a chase lounge, a comb, a door handle, a clock, and a brooch, perhaps, uh, that might be. This is, of course, the uh, thing that you manipulate to determine the value of each of those artworks. So, anyways, let me speed up a little bit here. I don't want to uh, bore you or, or go too long. So here's our score track there. Fantastic. Of course, look at this. So if you're not playing with the expansion content, this stuff, you get to use this scoring track board, which I think is just so, so wonderful. She's drinking a lemonade or something. This is very, very, very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm not an artist. I do not know much about uh, art. I got an A in art history, but an A minus in elementary art. So this is not my uh, area of expertise, but if you know anything about Art Nouveau and want to enlighten me, I would love that so much. This is a uh, dial that tells you what costs you need to pay for your buildings. There's where the artworks are valued. Very lovely. The mannequin piece right there is uh, this famous statue in Brussels of this boy who is uh, urinating. <laughs> it's a fountain. It's very strange. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We've got the nobles board there. And then this is, of course, the somewhat modular board we use like this to assemble all five of these pieces. In each game, you can kind of uh, obviously shuffle them around. And then uh, I believe maybe expansion content is on the back side, perhaps. But... I'm not sure about that. Got player pieces here, very simple. Just these kind of meeples you'll be putting out on the board. Very nice, pretty basic. And component-wise, nothing too uh, you know exciting. We've got discs and cubes and meeples. So as far as those tokens go, nothing too special. This is a new resource, I believe, that comes in the expansion because we already have the white cubes there, the Joker resource. And then beyond that, just some cards to take a look at here. If I can pop these open very, very quickly without damaging anything. I always get paranoid about scuffing up the cards as I open these little packets. So, all right, there we go. 
This looks like expansion content, or at least these do. These don't look familiar to me. I could be wrong. Yeah. And then these guys here, very nice. I believe these would go at the bottom of each column. Uh, and this game, by the way, is so fascinating because it's a work placement game, but also, as we talked about this setting up this board, okay? As you put your workers out on this main board, you have to pay money, right? At least one coin and up to as many as you want. And then at the end of each round, after you do all the worker placement, okay? I'll move this over a little bit. At the bottom of each of these columns, there's gonna be this kind of bonus card and whoever paid the most in each column gets the bonus card, which is so interesting. And there's area majority around each of these red icons. So it is just so three dimensional, truly uh, in that sense. I think it's so fascinating. So that is what these cards are for, these bonus cards that give you um, a benefit for, again, paying the most in those columns. And finally, we have one more packet of cards. Yeah, I do like this organized. This is very, very handy. I, I could see that being actually very practical and functional and utilitarian, which is kind of everything I want in an insert. So lastly, here we go. These are the stock cards. Each round, the bank's gonna pay this much when you visit, and depending on player count, you're gonna block off chunks of the board. Uh, it's just fascinating. Uh, if you wanna know more about that, of course, you can watch a review. There's so many stock cards on Happy to see that. Oh yes, and the art on these cards is so much better than in the original. Everyone starts with George Brugman. And then of course, again, you can recruit further nobles kind of help you with your calls, getting points or moving up architect tracks or converting resources or pulling people out of uh, prison, <laughs> basically. So there you go. And this might also be expansion content. I think it is. I think these cards are expansion. Anyways, well, there you have it, guys. That is everything there is inside this box. This is, whoops, Brussels 1893. Again, I am thrilled. I'm gonna get this played as soon as I humanly possibly can, hopefully uh, very, very soon. Let me go ahead and show you the top cover one last time for good measure. Let me get this all back in here like so. And here it is. What a lovely, lovely, repackaging of this fantastic game. Look at that beautiful, beautiful. I am enthralled. I am so excited. So there you go. Thank you so much for checking out this unboxing. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have some amazing games that you're unboxing yourself this holiday season. Uh, this was a special gift to myself, actually. So anyways, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye, everybody.